Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Test Drive Unlimited PlayStation 2 Edition. Today is episode number 15. If you guys do want to keep up to date with the TDU PS2 series, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And also, don't forget to check the description for our social links. We have Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. But hopefully, you guys do enjoy today's video. Let's do this. So, uh, today I did actually go into uh, our home city town center uh in the uk and uh we have these shops uh, i know there are some other countries that have them um they're like gamestop um but they instead of selling new and used games they are specialists for just owned games and used games but they sell it's the only place you can go really in the uk to buy old stuff uh without going on ebay I don't trust eBay personally, so I go to CEX and buy all of my uh, old games. Uh, and today I went in and I bought eight PlayStation 2 games. Um, actually, I lie, it was seven because one of them they didn't have in stock in the end. Um, is that the end of the race? Jesus. Holy shit. That was quick. 47 seconds dead. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed the noble, though. Absolutely destroyed the noble. Uh, so next up is the M14. This one is slightly faster than the M12. And we're going against Rebecca. Rebecca, time to get destroyed. But yes, uh, I have bought quite a few PlayStation 2 games, specifically um, because when I got the PS2, initially I only had car games. Um, but I decided I wanted to play like the classic Rayman games on the PS2 because Rayman sort of like was sort of a hit on the PS2, and I remember playing it as a kid on the PS2. So I really want to play that, give that a try, and see what that's like again. Because I haven't played it in many, many years. It'll bring back some memories, that's for sure. Oh, careful. Ah, no. Okay, the Noble is catching up a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Weaving through there. The speed is insane. You really, oh, in this game, you really do feel like you're driving at like 150 miles an hour. Like you genuinely get the sense of speed. 50 mile an hour drift as well. Like there is a sense of realism to this game. Okay, yes, you can sort of crash your car and it goes like ding, 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 like a pinball. But other than that, there is a sense of realism and a sense of enjoyment in this. Nowhere near like the realism of like Gran Turismo. But there's just something that clicks with this game. And I haven't seen a full walkthrough of the PS2 version. I searched everywhere. I'd seen, um, I think it was a guy called Racing Game Archive. He does loads of like two hour long videos of racing games and he just archives them but he doesn't oh no come on come on uh they sometimes don't play through the entire game um and i don't think he played through the entire of uh tdu2 on the ps2 i don't even know if he did play it but uh if he did it'd be good to check that out But I did have a look for like a 100... Ah, come on, stop crashing. Uh, I did have a look for a 100% playthrough. Couldn't find any. Um, so I felt like it was my duty to step in and be like, yep, I'm going to take this job. Thank you very much. Slow down. Nice. Nice. 
I am looking to uh, take part in quite a few more clubs today. We're going to do more club races than um, normal races. And there's the audio glitch again. Always happens. It's weird why it happens as well. Right, but next up is a Noble M400. Now, the Noble M4 team was a little bit difficult in the last race, so... Hopefully the M400 gives us a chance, but uh, I know it's definitely much faster. I wouldn't even call it a small car. Like, it's genuinely quite big. Right, off we go. Miranda, stay back. This is my win. Lotus Exige getting that head start very well. The M400 trying to overtake. Come on. Nice. The Noble not being able to take those corners as well as us. Unbelievable. And, oh no, the Noble crashed a while ago. I was worried that we were going to get overtaken, but apparently not. Apparently not. Come on. Right, we got another corner. Final corner. The Noble is nowhere to be seen. We'll take that win. Thank you very much. 57 seconds for that race. Decent. Ah, uh, I don't like that money though. 666. The devil's number. Right, so next up is the Caterham CSR 260. That is a Caterham that I've never heard of. Never heard of that before. Um, but yeah. I've never... How have I never heard of that Caterham before? You would expect someone like me to know all of the Caterhams and all of the British cars. But no, I know more about American cars and Japanese cars than I do British. Haha, <laughs> get wrecked. You get stuck behind the traffic cars. Now, I do remember... I don't know whether it was this one or if there's another race where there's a caterham as the president. But there was a race with a caterham as a president that took me forever to do. It took me, like... 20 attempts, I can remember. I can remember clearly doing it multiple times. And I think I myself had a caterham as well, so it was, like, level playing field. I do have memories of this game. Um, I have a feeling this isn't that event. Because I don't recognise this direction. No, this definitely isn't that event. Ah! That's why it isn't, because there's a Caterham Club, and that was the event that I was in. But we won ourselves a Caterham CSR 260. That's sick. Hey, we're going to be moving on to a Caterham club soon. Right, what club are we going to do next, though, is the question. In fact, I might do the Caterham club next. We'll mix it up. Let's go. Right, so we are here uh, driving this Ford Shelby concept. I think we got it in the uh, last uh, recording session. Uh, it is a new day. Um, and we are not going to be doing the Caterham challenge. Uh, reason for that is because the, um, or the Caterham Club, sorry. Uh, reason for that is because the Caterham Club is all the way at the north of the map, and we are only midway up the map, so we'd have to do, like, a massive 20-mile road trip. I don't really feel like doing that right yet, um, so I feel like progressing up, sort of, through events is a better idea. Um, but we are here at a Upgrade Tuners. Uh, and we are going to upgrade the hell out of this car. We're going to make it super fast. Right. Test drive unlimited. Let's have a look. 
We've got some very nice cars here. There's our car. Right, uh, so what kind of power performance packages can we put in? So we can upgrade it to a 726 brake horsepower car with 3.9 second acceleration and 239 miles an hour top speed. And it's still a B-Class. It's a no-brainer, really. I think we're going to have to go for it. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this car uh, to go to the... Okay, that is quick. Um, we are going to be using this car to go to the Ford Owners Club. Um, but I feel like... Wait, what's this? Is this a time trial? Based on the fact that our car's taking us this way, I think we might want to just give it a try. This one's called Traffic. Let's give the car a try. Yeah, it's a B vehicle restriction. 11.4 miles for 111,000 credits. 4 minutes, 32.999. It's a very specific number. Why can't you just put 433? Uh, but let's do it. 11.4 miles. This gives us a little bit of a journey to do. We'll test out the car and then we'll go to the Ford Club. There we go. This is it. Time trial time. Based on the fact that this car is nearly 240 miles an hour top speed and it looks like we are going onto a highway, I have a feeling we could excel in this. If it's 11 miles down the highway, we'll be done in three minutes easy. This is definitely going to be a major test of top speed. And handling. Acceleration, not so much. This isn't... Uh, it isn't necessary. Acceleration. That was close. Okay, we are sort of like steady at 200 miles an hour. I was expecting to hit 230 though. Very nice. This is uh, getting onto like the more advanced races because you have to go down this. Obviously with traffic, hence the name of this event and not crash and burn. You crash and burn, you redo the whole thing. Uh, that just feels too risky going around those corners like that. At least this road is fairly straight for now. I didn't want to take that. I saw there was no road there, so uh, tap of the brakes was mandatory. And this is coming up to the tightest corner we've had yet. No, you can stay away. I'm actually kind of surprised that this car doesn't hit the stated top speed. I'm actually gutted about that. Oh, I that junction where it split, that was sketchy. Did not like that one bit. We're in Shafter though. I don't even know how far we've driven. We've definitely driven a long way so far. Fact is, I think the average B car can't hit um. 190 in this game. Like, you think A classes are like four GTs. The four GT is slower than this, easily. And that's an A class car. So, I mean, this game can be quite lenient with uh, times and rewards and that. If you think about, think about it, 
for four minutes, right? If you work out the math, four minutes requires you to do three miles every minute. And you think if you multiply that by 60, you've got yourself 180 miles an hour. So as long as you're averaging 180, you'll do it in four minutes. We've got the finish line coming up already. Jesus, we've de destroyed four minutes. I didn't even think the finish line was coming. <laughs> Look at that. 48 seconds faster. That's a lot of points though, and 111,000 credits. I'll take that. Your itinerary is being recalculated. Wow. I am impressed. Okay, so what we're going to do now, uh, if we go to filters and select clubs, we are looking for the Ford Owners Club. The Muscle Car Club, which we can go to at some point. Here it is, the Ford Owners Club. Let's target that and make our way there then. Right, so while we're on our way to the uh, Ford Owners Club, one thing I do want to point out, there's the Ford dealership. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is, look at this interior. This is a fancy car. Ah, I don't like interior. Ugh, nope. I'm getting out of that while I can. <laughs> um, so actually this is going to be for the first series in a while where I've recorded the first video and the first video will come out within a week. <laughs> this is the first series I've done that in like six months. I think the last series I did that was Doom Eternal, which was like three months, four, five months ago. Um, but we are here in the Ford Owners Club. And by the looks of it, we've got two Ford Mustangs, we've got a Ford GT, and we've also got the Shelby GR1 concept. Now, we have a Shelby Cobra concept, but I have a feeling our car may still be faster. Uh, but there's also a Shelby GR1 concept as well. Uh, I think that's... No. The Ford Mustang GTR concept is that one. Okay. Right, so let's start with Frankie then. Bunyip. Bunyip. Frankie Bunyip. That's his name. We're going to try and um, beat him. Beat everyone in the Ford Owners Club and take this one down. And then I think afterwards we'll be moving on to the muscle cars next. Muscle car club. But uh, we'll take it as it goes. Here we go. Very nice. Two miles till the finish line. But this car chews through road like it's nothing. And absolutely obliterates all of its opponents. So... There is one car that is, like, much more powerful than this. And I'm really looking forward to driving it. This game... Oh, I've never been so excited for a game. I don't even know how many videos we're making out of this, or how long this series is going to last. But uh, as of starting this day, from when I said I uh, was starting recording, I think from the time trial in the last clip, from then was 28% completed the game so far. And I think that's only races that's counted in that, if I remember correctly. Um, the clubs maybe as well. But if it is just races, then we're probably only about 20% done. But there we go. Ford Owners Club defeated. Hang on, no. That's the first member of the Ford Owners Club defeated. We've got five more to do and then the entire club is defeated. But next up is George Pig Krupp. Another Mustang GT. This is going to be easy. Ow. Ow. That was really hot. <laughs> Why did I... I was rubbing my hands and I went really fast. Ah, uh, that hurt. I'm going to hold my cold drink for a minute. Here we go, Woodlawn. We're at Woodlawn. 
<laughs> with the measly Ford Mustang against a uh, Shelby GTR. Or GT1, whatever it's called. It doesn't matter because this thing is fast. Nice. Hit 200 miles an hour through these sections. S slowing down there, getting some off road penalty. Uh, we have four miles left of this race. Uh, it is actually longer than I was expecting. I didn't actually check how long the race was when we started. Uh, come on, keep it steady. There is currently a plane going over my house outside my window. So I don't know if that's picking up in the recording or not. But uh, oh well. It goes meow. So it's good in my books. <laughs> Anything that goes now is good. Three miles left. This is very good. A minute and 20 seconds on the clock so far. And we've come back to the Ford dealership. We just can't get away from this Ford dealership. I think now on like seven or eight occasions, we've just like ended up passing that exact Ford dealership. We've probably passed like another dealership like 20 times by now and I haven't noticed. But that Ford dealership has a lot of memories because it's like the backbone of most of the times whenever I played this game. It was always, ah, get to the Ford dealership. Oh! The lorry over there. Bit of a uh, blind bend. This is good. This is good. Oh, come on. What was that? Cars appearing out of nowhere. That's what that was. The fact is, once you, like... it, The game progresses at a perfect rate. So you don't go straight into fast cars um, and sort of have to struggle. Um, it's sort of like Gran Turismo, it eases you in. You go through the licenses, you're supposed to go through all the licenses first really, um, but you go through all the licenses and it just it eases you into the game, gets you ready. This is what this does, just on a different way. But there is a load more money. We're going to be at a million credits soon. I don't think I ever actually managed to hit a million credits in this game. I'm not sure. I may have. I may not have. Uh, but next up is the Ford Mustang GTR concept. I know we'll definitely be able to get to third place. We're obviously in fifth at the moment. Um, but whether we can get those last two is going to be questionable. Um, I think the Co Cobra concept should be easy. But the Ford GT, meh. We're going to have to uh, be careful of that one. But then again, we have, like, destroyed cars that are lower levels than us before many times, so. Don't know, it might be easy. All that wheel spin, though. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, the Ford didn't quite crash. We've got a six-mile race on our hands here. Very fun driving this car. There's just something satisfying about driving this. Or driving in this game just in general. It's so much more fun than any other open world game that I've played. This is the one open world game that I grew up with. Because obviously open world wasn't a thing back in the day. Um, back in like 2006 and that. Um, it was starting to become a thing in 2010 I would say. Open Worlds was starting, like, uh, Need for Speed had their first Open World in, no, 
They had open world before. In like 2006 or 2005 with Most Wanted. Uh, Midnight Club had an open world. But it wasn't like proper open world. These worlds were still quite small. And then came along Test Drive that blew everything out of the water. Did a proper open world where you could explore, find stuff. And it was crazy. There's that Ford dealership again. I've gone off road. Shit. Drive or you'll get a penalty. Uh, uh, so like I was saying before I messed up like, ah, uh, come on. Before I messed up like big time. Uh, and got that penalty. Um, yeah, this was the original open world game. This is what started like big open world because it set an example that no other game could be. No other game could be it. They released Test Drive Unlimited 2 in 2011, right? No other game still had an open world of this size and TDU2 managed to beat that again by having two maps. They had one full-scale Hawaii and one full-scale Ibiza. Two full-scale maps. And you think, wow. And when Horizon, the game that most people will now refer to as the best um, sort of open-world racing game because of the fact that it is... There is so many more cars, so many... The gameplay is smooth, realistic, yet arcade enough that anyone can pick it up. That map was probably about the size of the city, the main starting city in this game. You think that's probably about 5% of this entire map. 5%. Of the entire map in Horizon 1. If you were to compare it to Horizon 4, 10% of the map at the most of this map. It's crazy. And yes, Horizon 2, uh, Horizon 4 is like a high quality game. They've definitely done that. But then the Crew 2 comes along, they make quite frankly a larger map than Test Drive. Uh, and that is quite fairly high quality. is much higher quality than TDU 2. Uh, their map. Um, and that game came out three years later. The crew. But I still feel like Test Drive managed to achieve something that the crew still didn't do. And that was make a full scale map. And make it feel like you're actually in that world. Whereas America there's no transitions. But yes. Here we go. 4,000 credits. Let's go to the next one. That was a very long lecture on open world maps in racing games. I do it a lot because I always praise Test Drive. It's just such a good game. But uh, here we go. Ford Shelby GR1 concept. Let's go. Ah, that's the last of my energy drink. I did drink a Red Bull yesterday. Uh, this time I'm only drinking LucasAid. Because uh, the Red Bull sent me bouncing off the walls. I haven't had a Red Bull in like six months, so. <laughs> it's another GR concept, but I don't think this one actually has the stripe on it. Oh, that's a good shout. There's also the uh, Racing Stripe Club that we can go to. Because our car has a Racing Stripe. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good. That music though. It's so catchy. It's a good it's a good soundtrack to listen to while you're driving. I don't know if any of this music is like from Hawaii or anything like that. Oh. Nobody saw that. We're obviously easily destroying this uh Shelby concept. But uh we are in an upgraded version, so uh we can't really say much. Whereas I've sort of given up on Ridge Racer 6 trying to do that 100% walkthrough because it's a difficult game actually. 
I was sort of singing his praises at the start, but I didn't realise how difficult it got towards the later end. So I did give up on that, I will admit. But this game I'm not giving up on. Not at all. Mainly because this is an easier game. But also because I'm committed to 100% it. Because I never 100% completed this game. And this being like the first open world game I ever bought, ever had. It was the second racing game I owned on my PSP. Probably like the fifth racing game I ever played, ever. It was fun. Really good. I want to finish it. Bring back those memories. There we go. Brett, happy tuna. Happy tuna. <laughs> what are these names? There we go. We've hit the 800,000 mark. And we've hit the 600,000 mark as well on points. But next up is the Ford GT. This is the start of the cars that I'm worried about. Um, but as we've proven in the past, we can easily do it. No problem. I can hear a bike outside. Awesome. And off we go. AJ Tracy live and direct. Sorry, I had to do it. Come on. Oh. Nice. Nearly at the finish already, and we are miles ahead of the Ford. That Ford was never a problem, apparently. Ah. Okay. I'm the problem, though. There we go, across the finish line. It's very good there. 50 seconds. That is insane. And 7,000 credits. Nice. Let's have a look, see what the final event is. And the final event is going to be the Ford Shelby Cobra concept. Let's go. It's a me. Mechanic CG. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I can cringe even myself out. That's how embarrassing and awkward I am. Alawai Golf. Okay. We're against Adam. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Okay, so he is very fast. So we're going to have to rely on taking the corners much smoother than him. And maybe a couple of off-road penalties too. Might be necessary. Okay, okay. We even threw the traffic there. He may slow down there. That's like the 15th time we've seen the Ford garage. That Ford garage is just implemented into our brains now. We all remember it. If anyone grew up playing this game, you all remember the Ford Garage. Like, you could probably put that Ford Garage in a Test Drive Unlimited subreddit and everyone would instantly recognize it. And you'd be like, only the OG players of Test Drive will remember this. I might actually do that to see if I get a response. <laughs> Nice. And here's the finish line. The Ford has been beaten. Congratulations, your next vehicle upgrade is free. Cool. Because I think I've run out of uh, vehicle upgrades, so that's decent. We're going to see us in the president's chair. Let's see our name there at the top. There we go. Our name is Player. I didn't work out actually how to change that name. So uh, we're just called player. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, make sure to hit that join button or click on the merch link in the description. It would mean the world to me. And also, don't forget to check in the description for our other social links. We've got Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. So make sure to follow us over on there. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>